What's up, guys? I'm back with an interview in English. Since today we're going to talk about how futsal uh, can help footballers uh, in their development with an, with an expert in the field, uh, Pedro Santos, who is the coach of Futsal Minerva's first team, the, the best there is in, in Switzerland, actually. And since the Young Boys or eBay, the, the football club of, of the Swiss capital, have a quite unique partnership with Minerva, Pedro also gives fut, uh, futsal training sessions to their uh, uh, U12, U13s and U14s in the winter. So, Pedro, I'm, I'm very excited to have you on, on the channel here. Uh, how, how are you doing first? I'm really happy to be here with you and to share some ideas with you. And first of all, thanks for uh, inviting me to, yeah, to, to try to share a bit of what we are doing with Minerva, also what I'm doing here in Switzerland since, uh, since I come to Switzerland. And I'm really glad to to share this time with you and and looking forward to your questions and to try to to make uh, futsal a bigger thing here in Switzerland because at the end that's that's always my goal. Yeah, I'm also look, looking forward to it. Um, uh, and Pedro, you you started to introduce uh, you um, a bit. So you grew up in Lisbon before coming to Switzerland in two, in 2016. Um, to take over Minerva's first team, meaning you know the the evolution of the place futsal has had in Portugal over over time. That's why I first wanted to ask you if it's gotten more popular since uh, you started on on the sideline uh, with maybe the help of star player Ricardinho, knowing that for example Benfica and Sporting, where you've coached as well, uh, are both multi-sport clubs, so they have both had their own futsal section uh, for a long time already. A futsal in Portugal is it's a sport essential in the last 10 years that, that have a giant boom. Uh, for sure, I'm connected to futsal since I since I born almost. Uh, I start to play really early, and then I think I, I follow the develop of the sport in Portugal in the last 30, 32, 33 years. Uh, for sure, the, the coming of big clubs, short clubs like Benfica to the sport was a, a giant boom. Sporting already exists. The section of futsal of sporting is one of the most uh, oldest sections in, in, in Portugal in the in the futsal world. Sporting starts really really early to have futsal, uh, but then of course when Benfica come, when teams like Braga join, Rio Ave join, so all football teams, shirt teams, if I can say, with with a big uh, big mass of of fans behind. Uh, that was a, a big, uh, a big um, step to the sport. That's clear, and I think on the last uh, fifteen years, um, things also develop uh, really fast and in Portugal because the the federation and this team on the federation, on the Portuguese federation, come with uh, with the great ideas and with great plannings, which they 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 put it in practice uh, plannings. To develop the sport, uh, futsal as a like a, a, a unique sport, not not as a, a tool for develop football like was a bit before, but as a as a sport with their own life, and since all the reformulation of the competitive uh, uh, competitive um, board since youth stages until seniors. That was in the last 15 years, a uh, big merit for the federation, for the national coach, for, for uh, the people that are responsible on the Portuguese federation for futsal. Um, that grows, grows a lot, a lot. In Portugal, in this moment, fut futsal is clearly the second sport after football. In terms of practice, people playing the, the sport in terms of TV, uh, number of spectators in TV, Almost all the games of, of Portuguese league are, are passed on the TV, on the national TV or in some private channels in TV. So the sport grows a lot because I think the sport has a really big potential. And uh, 20 years ago, the coaching courses you did, uh, were they especially for uh, futsal coaches or was it <clears> like <throat> fo football coaches who, who had to teach futsal? Uh, I have I have uh, uh, license A UEFA A, and all my license in C to to A was already in Portugal just for futsal coaches. Before was like a football course 
with uh, with some specialization in futsal. Um, but mine, all all the all the licenses that I have, and I start my first license already, two thousand four, two thousand five. I'm not sure. So FSC. Uh, where for roots was just futsal already in Portugal was just a course of futsal. Okay, but that that was surely not the case in other countries like like here in Switzerland in in two thousand and six. I I'm not sure they they had already uh, futsal coaching uh, courses um, before maybe a, a certain level. Uh, but well, you, you've got basically all types of age uh, groups possible at Benfica's, but uh, above all at Sporting's Academy. So my, my question is, wasn't there any switch sometimes between the two different sports sections so that footballers and futsal players could discover, sort of discover the other activity and maybe even end up stopping it for, for the other? We know a lot of Brazilian football players started with futsal, for example. Uh, yeah, it, it, there was not a direct connection uh, because we work in, diff, in separate places. So Benfica has their own academy in the south part of Lisbon, sporting also, and futsal is, is based near the stadium, near the, the big facilities. So we were not close in terms of distance, uh, but in fact, we had, we had some, some exchanges uh, in terms of players. So if a player that was playing football uh, would like to try to come futsal and if the people of Sporting or Benfica would understand that this player don't have the pleasure to play football and he would like to try futsal, then he come to futsal and the opposite was also working. We have cases on both directions. So, for example, I can tell that Gelson Martins plays now at Monaco in football and he was international for Portugal, plays in Sporting first team. He started with us in futsal. Um, then he went to football and the opposite also. Afonso is now world champion for Portugal and European champion for Portugal. He actually start to play football and then he don't have much pleasure, I guess, to play football. And then he come to, to, play, to play futsal and at the moment he's one of the best players of Portugal and yeah, world champion. So, um, so we have this unofficial partnership we don't do that like uh, in a regular base because the sports there are already different since the beginning so normally a kid in portugal that starts to play futsal he plays always futsal and the kid that starts to play football starts always start continues to play to play football there are two different sports the fact is when they are young that's what i defend all the time also here um, basically we play with the ball of the feet it's not about being futsal or football and um, then it's just they look what they like more, what they have more pleasure, and also their own characteristics fit more on football or on, or on futsal, and then they, they, they go for what they like more. But it's possible to have this kind of, of, of exchanges. That's, that's clear, essentially on the youth stages. After later, it's hard. Uh, I'm not surprised uh, Jelson Martin uh, used to play futsal uh, as a kid because we... Well, he's very he's very good technically, and that's quite typical of futsal uh, players. And that's why I wanted to to talk about now. Um, uh, so the topic: why futsal can be so helpful for for the footballers, uh, uh, and above all, that at early ages, uh, as you mentioned, since um, well, that's what many famous players affir uh, affirmed. I put a link in the description so that you can find all the, the quotes I'm referring to. But basically, the, the environment is the reason because one can benefit from the differences there are with a normal football pitch. So I suggest uh, we talk about them one by one. How does the, uh, the size of the pitch and the number uh, of players, which both are smaller but not proportionally, uh, affect the game for, for footballers? Yeah, that, that's a long discussion that I have here in Switzerland and I fight for that all the time. I think uh, the best way to learn to play football, futsal, whatever, to play with the ball on the feet, it's, uh, it's to play and to enjoy it. And when we are children, to play on the street, like so street soccer, if I can say it like that, not football, not futsal. And I think uh, what I believe is that futsal, it's much more closer in to, to street soccer than football itself, uh, because we play in a smaller space. Um, and it's, it's, it's obvious if you play 
in uh, in, a, in a smaller place in a smaller pitch um, that you will touch more times in the ball that you will have more actions interactions with the ball that will also have more interactions without the ball because the size of the pitch is so small the goals are so near to each other that the danger is to, to score a goal or to suffer a goal is always present so all the decisions that you have in the game uh, having the ball or not having the ball will will probably finish uh, in goal or on a goal on a goal opportunity it's like street soccer when they play on the street the games finish 30 to, to, to 27 for example after 30 minutes uh, because the size is small and and all all the interactions that are permanently done you are always taking decisions always or with the ball or without the ball and all your decisions have a big impact in the result of the game um and, and of course when you are children you don't think on these things but you are permanently working your brain and adapting your brain to all, all these things and on the football pitch it's totally different because it's much bigger um, and of course it's 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 a sport that we have to have other kind of references like space etc that futsal can't give to football players but that in the early stages yeah it's to have to there are no a kid with eight years old or six years old or 10 years old he can't do a pass for 40 meters distance so um don't it makes sense to work on this kind of, of, of size. So that's why football reduces the space and reduces the amount of players. But what I think the football coaches still have a big lack of manipulating the, variability, the, vari the variables of the training to achieve what is more important with these reduced spaces, at least here in Switzerland. That's helped when I see the trainings, when I start to, to follow a bit football also, uh, but it's growing and it's developing and people like you that, uh, not only like you, but I know many people here that try to, to search for information and to look for information, how to grow also in these kind of exercises and methodology. And that's really grateful to feel and to see. Yeah, and you told in a video um, you, you made for, uh, for the Berner Young Boys, that in futsal uh, players have uh, 80 square meters. Uh, uh, yeah, to sp they all, each player has uh, 80 square meters uh, of space instead of 2,000 uh, uh, to 200 on, on on a football pitch. So it means well less time because you you're always uh, put under pressure as you say it, uh, and therefore you you need to to. Uh, to offer solutions for, for the player who has, uh, who has the ball. And it, it means you, you experience a greater uh, variety of situations because of the more frequent uh, switches of position because you, you always have to move uh, as well. But then we have um, another, the second difference. If, if Well, it's not that big of difference, but um, uh, the pitch surface uh, isn't um, is is also different as well. Um, even if that, that if that's not that big of a deal nowadays, since many pitches are artificial and therefore the, not as bumpy as it used to to be in some cases. But the game might might still be a bit faster in though because of the smooth floor there is. Um, but I think it's rather a, a detail compared to the the impact true futsal balls can can have. So what are the differences with the ball for outside and what are the their consequences? Pedro. Yeah, I think that the biggest difference of all it's the size of the pitch and the square meters per player. For me, that's the the the, the, the bigger difference uh, between, between between the sports. If you do an analogy for the number of uh, players that plays in football, if we do the analogy for football pitch size, normally 100 per 60 quadrat for 60 meters, we would play a game of 35 versus 35. In a football pitch, if you say if you do the the the, the analogy in terms of numbers, uh, of course we, you can't play thirty five versus thirty five. Don't make any sense. But in fact, five against five, it's the same. If we would play thirty five against thirty five in the football pitch, and five against five makes all the sense. Um, and that's therefore that that they have what I said before: much contact, 
too much decisions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Of course, the pitch, the, the surface of the pitch, have also some impact on the game. That's that's clear because it's different. It's faster. It's uh, it's more controllable. The the control of the ball, um, and sure, the, the 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 characteristics of the ball have also some impact on the game. So the ball is smaller, the ball is heavier, um, so it don't jump so much. Uh, and uh, because of that, the ball is always also more near to, to, the, to the body of the player and it's more controllable ball um, also. Uh, and uh, and yeah, football ball jumps more, you have less time the ball in contact with your feet than in a football ball. Um, then yeah, then, then, then you, you are always developing a bit more the the technical resources so i would say that that it's not correct but in a in a big in a with the i i can see i can say it like this futsal it's a, a it's expertise sport for, to play the ball with the feet in terms of technique we develop much more technique we are a bit poor in terms of 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 tactics okay because we play with less people and of course if you play with less people you have less things to control because in 11 against 11 you have to control 11 opponents 11 10 teammates the, the, the notion of the space in futsal we don't have this i don't want to say that football it's poor in terms of tactics because it's not but in a global image i would say it like that futsal it's richer in terms of 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 technique things uh, and it's a bit poor in terms of tactical aspects of the game well, you, you mentioned as well that the, the fact the ball is less bouncy means it stays uh, more on the ground, which is very interesting for, for children and youth football because we know he heading the ball should be avoided uh, until a certain age. And sometimes the, there are also phases in the game that are just a lot of lo that are just a lot of a loss of time, in my opinion. You you know the typical transitions with many aerial duels uh, one after another and both teams just wait that, that the ball comes down again to be able to to keep it on the floor um and well the fact it is smaller also forces to to be maybe more precise as you said when you you t touch it so it can help uh, proprioception as well but i wanted to know if as well if it's the reason why foot Futsal players use uh, the sole of the foot much more, or is it because there, there aren't any cleats, uh, or because the less the ball bounces less, so so players are, are more confident to use the the sole. There, there isn't one just one reason, right? No, I think there are. It's, it's a conjugation of several reasons. Uh, so the first of all, it's because the the side of the pitch is so small that you are always under pressure. And if you are under pressure and if you if you receive a ball like you receive in football with the side of your feet, then the ball are not with you. It's not a part of your body. And on this timing, the ball can be stolen from you. And when you put the soul on the ball, you have the control of the ball. The ball is an extension of your body. So you know that you can use your, you feel the ball. So if you have an opponent always uh, pressing you or two opponents always pressing you because the side of the pitch is really small, you are obliged to have the ball under control. Because if you receive the ball in a lateral pass, if you receive a ball like a football player would receive, then probably uh, when you will be in contact again with the ball, probably on this meantime, you are, if, the, if, if you have a good defender in front of you, you will already lose the possession of the ball. And then you are under, under, uh, under danger because the, goal, the goals are near to each other. That's the first reason. And then, of course, the, the fact of the ball don't jump so much. It's more controllable. And of course, also the fact, the shoes, the difference of the shoes. So we don't have the pitons on the, on the, on the down from the shoe. Yeah. And of course, the, the, um, also the, the pitch, uh, because then you can control better uh, because the surface of the pitch is also different. Uh, but you can see also much football players, essentially football players that have background on futsal, the, almost all Brazilians had, or some many Argentinians also, many Spanish also, uh, Portuguese also. You see that in many moments of the game, um, a reception with a sole of the feet uh, can disbalance an opponent by just using your body, controlling the ball with the with the with the soul, and that comes 
from futsal or from f uh, street soccer uh, totally because you don't develop this kind of skills uh, working outside since you are a child because I know many kids that play just football and they don't have this kind of ability uh, because they don't need to work it uh, if they just play uh, foot football but when you play futsal you automatically have the need to control it like that and then you will develop your brain will be prepared to 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 find other solutions yeah that's so perfect think, for, uh, oh yeah i think it's a mix sorry i think it's a mix of several factors that that oblige you to to control the ball with the soul yeah but you're right to to insist on, on that that on the fact that you you need to to play futsal to in order to to start using the soul before you you just won't Learn. Uh, you you just won't uh, start using the soul uh, of the foot if you if you don't play futsal because the, you you're not uh, forced to to use it uh, as you say. So that's why I think it's important it's important as well uh, to to play some futsal. Uh, um, of course, uh, rather uh, in early ages of of uh, of your development but there's still a, a last difference to to talk about since not only the pitch and the ball are smaller in futsal but the goals too uh, so of course shots need to be more precise at least when on 1v1 against the keeper and talking about the keeper role uh, what can they learn or practice maybe maybe more inside the in, maybe more inside than outside for the uh, really, the, the expertise of goalkeeper training, it's not my expertise area. Uh, but when I see some, some goalkeepers, modern goalkeepers in football, I think they have much now more technique of, of, of futsal goalkeepers. So they stand much more uh, up. They don't go so much on the floor in lateral positions. Um, and I, I think um the the notion of defending the space and using the body to close as much possible the goal it's uh, it's more uh, developed in foot futsal goalkeepers than in football because in football the goals are so big that independent of 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 your working you it's it's always much space free to to finalize and in futsal when you have a good goalkeeper that can use his body on the on the right way to defend the goal then the goal comes really 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 small uh, because after you are after 10 meters with the goalkeeper one to one just one body in a good position can defend almost 90 percent of the goal and in football that that don't exist but what i see now in many many goalkeepers football the way that they approach the one against one situation it's much more close to to football to futsal to futsal goalkeepers and in futsal goalkeepers we have different schools we have the spanish school we have the brazilian school they are totally different techniques of defending the goal but both efficient and you can take i don't i i can't say if it one is better than the other they are different uh but in fact they are both efficient because both allow to 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 close much space of of the goal yeah that's actually what what i what i first thought was well the goal is smaller so it's easier for the the goalkeeper so he won't learn anything but in fact you need to be to, it it forces you to improve some details on mm -hmm. how to to cover the the space because uh, since you have less space well to cover you, you really need to be that good and perfect uh, in that matter so uh, using the feet yeah you, you say it as well the um, you you don't really dive as a goalkeeper in futsal. It's more uh, it's more about using the the feet, and that's also something um, they they can they can learn from from futsal. And now we mentioned uh, the the many advantages playing futsal can have for, for football. So I, I'd like to ask you, in, in your opinion, well, you uh, what all what age groups can most benefit from futsal sessions? Because we all know the older you become, the more you need to master. 11 against 11 tactics, as you as you said before, uh, and there's also surely a sort of an age limit for young futsal players to switch to football, since you also need to sprint to see further away. Uh, keepers need well to, to dive as well to to defend the much bigger goal. So, 
you see what I mean? You... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally understand you. Uh, in my opinion, yeah, we don't have a fixed goal to say if it's until until this age or until this age. In my opinion, um, the the transition can be done if you play until juniors D, so under 13, under 14. After that, will be really hard. Will be really hard because after that, a kid that works with under 16 um, at eBay, for example, yeah, is already going on the really special specialization level of the football game. So then it's hard to trans to do the transition for futsal and the opposite, it's the same. A kid that works really futsal under 16 or under 17, uh, I believe that the, there are kids with under with 16 years old that they are already on the on the um, on the high level of of specialization of the game. So then then will be, for my opinion, don't make sense. It I can't say that will be not one exception or two exceptions that can exist, uh, but the majority of 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 in my opinion the majority of of the the kids could do the transition if they play for example futsal until under 13 under 14 and then go go to football also also because of their biological devel, devel, development in terms of strength in terms of power in terms of yeah all the adaptations that they need for the football game that they don't need for the futsal game because in terms of physiological resources they are two different games but until these ages yeah, there are not 11 against 11. They play nine against nine or seven against seven. So the game is a bit more similar. Um, so I think it makes sense to do transitions until until juniors day. Uh, after that starts to be more difficult. And um, well, that doesn't mean we, we just can't uh, play futsal anymore once we, we are older from time to time. It can be good as well to, to, to play some, some futsal. I mean, not all training sessions have to be around uh, mastering 11 against 11 tactics. So uh, it's, it's, it's uh, that, that's, possible. That, that's clear when I see, and I like to follow some football coaches that I admire, like the teams of them play. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of Pep Guardiola, huge, huge, huge. Uh, not because the way he communicates, nothing because of that, but just because they play futsal inside the football pitch. Um, and I like to see and I like to search when yeah, you can find some things in YouTube, etc. Um, the, the exercises that he produces to coach high level football teams like Barcelona, Bayern Munich, now Manchester City, um, they are they are so similar to the work that we do in futsal. And that that shows to me, okay, so I think this guy is on the right direction. Because in fact, many part of his trainings are about reducing spaces, take, take uh, decision takeover, um, short uh, uh, short side sided games with really short spaces, and then of course he, he has the, the notion of the space that we don't work. He has to work that also on top of that. But the 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 biggest part of the game. Uh, of a coach like Pepe Guardiola, it's much similar to, to, to what we do in futsal. Reduced spaces, simple tables, triangles, always supports near to each other. Um, and I love to see because when I when I check some exercise that you do and I say, yeah, we do the same in futsal. So we, uh, it's, it's it, even in a high specialization level of futsal, I think futsal can contribute. Um, that's what I really, really believe. And yeah, that, that's that's the fact. In 20 years ago, we have many futsal coaches that to look information, they go to the football trainings. And now it's a bit the opposite. Uh, yeah, in sporting, uh, one of the football coaches uh, that was now at sporting the last years, he come to the fut futsal trainings to, 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 to have some new ideas how to work in reduced spaces. Uh, and that's really cool to us because we can use that as a tool to help also to, to, to football coaches to develop and, of course, to, to change some ideas and to learn also from the football coaches. I think the knowledge is always to be shared and that we can grow all. So I, I found it really interesting you, you told uh, that uh, fo football coaches now uh, come to to learn from, uh, come and visit futsal coaches uh, to learn from them. And uh, there's surely um, something that, 
we can only learn from them is, uh, you know, I've seen uh, videos of uh, futsal skills and, and you just never see them, uh, some of them on a pitch outside. And I'm not talking about rainbow flicks here, but rather about the different types of cutbacks that, that seem to exist. So do you think football st still has a lot to learn from, from your sport in, in that sense? And not only with, um, about skills with the the sole of the foot using the full uh, the sole of the foot. I have I have you can check in YouTube several videos of essential from the Brazilian players um, when they were children and the skills that they did inside in the hall. Then I can also forward to you. Um, and when they are in the high performance level, uh, they do the same in the pitch, in the, in the, in the football pitch. Uh, and I'm convinced that they develop these skills because they, they had the need to do it inside because they were much under pressure because they learned it like that. And then when they go outside and they have more space, then they, they, they also can do it and, and have success. Um, I have examples of Neymar, of Ronaldinho, uh, of Ronaldo Phenomenon, of, of João Coutinho, of, because all of them start to play foot, uh, futsal also from Iniesta. The way that Iniesta passes and controls the ball and etc., that's totally uh, a futsal player because he starts to play to play futsal. Um, so I, I think we don't have nothing to teach in that in that terms to football coaches. Or, or yeah, I think the the players have the need when they play futsal to find other strategies to succeed. Uh, yeah, and if. Just imagine this, if you have a kid playing in the grass here in Switzerland, we have fantastic pitches all over Switzerland. Uh, if he goes on the floor, it's comfortable. But if you play on the, on the on outside in street soccer, if you play on the Alcatraz, yeah, on the earth or uh, not, not on grass, if you go on the floor, you get hurt. And then your brain starts to find solutions. So I can't go on the floor. I have to dribble using Jenga but I can't go on the floor because if I go on the floor, I will have pain. And the same goes a bit on, on futsal um, and on football not, but uh, there are so many things. Yeah, Ajax, Amsterdam, they put their kids on the street to play football in street soccer because they know that the brain of the kids will, will, will promote some adaptations that playing in the grass will not be possible to do. Um, and that's, that's not futsal can 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 teach football nothing no it's what football can take from futsal that's the fact yeah you you can't tackle uh, uh unless you you want to get to get hurt so you you need to anticipate as you say the a defender just can't say well let's see and I'm, I'm i'm faster i'm going to tackle him afterwards no i, I really have to be focused to to uh, intercept the ball first and uh, but fut futsal isn't well a lot of people think futsal it, it's just about technique yeah but um, it's surely one of the best ways to train decision making as well uh, uh, as you as you said uh, with the many runs you have to make to receive the ball or compensate the changes of position uh, of your teammates so if you compare with street football for instance a big advantage can be the co the coach if he's a good one because he, he can correct bad decisions and i have the, the impressions uh, the impression concepts like driving forward with the ball so that an, an opponent jumps and it frees a teammate are easier to to understand for players when the they aren't many on the pitch uh, you know I, I mean playing five against five means a lot of 2v1s 3v2 situations etc et for each player and it makes more uh, sense to master these situations first bef before dealing with eight against six or bigger numbers. Do, do, do you agree on, on this point? I totally agree. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, yeah, we have, uh, we have, yeah, you saw the trainings and also at eBay. First of all, the principles of the game, football and futsal, they are the same. Uh, so when we have the ball, we look for the space, we, we look for penetration with the ball. We look to have be to be balanced on the space with less players, but the principles of the game they are the same, the same principles, um, and 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 of course, then the game comes different uh, with time and the age is going up because of all because of the size of the goals, the size of the ball, the size of the pitch, the the physical requirements, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But the the, the 
basic things like a situation of two against one or two against two, like you said, or a transition, offensive or defensive. Uh, when you win the ball, what to do immediately because you are under pressure? Or when you lose the ball, what to do immediately because you can recover the ball immediately on that moment? Are much more potential uh, work in, in, in futsal because you are always passing by these situations. The game is actually this all the time. Organize attack four against four, but if a guy loses a ball, if a player loses a ball, you have immediately transition. And probably on that transition, you have a, super, a superiority of one against goalkeeper or two against one or one against one, much situation of anyone against one. And these things are the same, but it's so much easier to explain. I, I, I feel this with DB, with DB players, with U12, U13, with 14. They, they get so much clear in their brains, how to defend a situation of two against one in the futsal pitch, because it's much more obvious, it's smaller than outside, because outside it's a two against one, but then they have six or seven more things, uh, players from their team and from the opponent coming, and then it's too, it's too much complex. And on futsal, we reduce this complexity, and then it's more clear to them. And yeah, I think also eBay, People that are in front of eBay, they realize that that's a big advantage. That's why we have this partnership already so long time. And I think we are really successful uh, in this partnership. Yeah, and a last topic for you, Pedro. I, I, I came to, to watch some of these training sessions you, you give for eBay's uh, academy players. And the first one was with the under-12 uh, team. Well, I told, I told, I told you di directly afterwards that it was the best training session I, I had seen so far because it was perfectly adapted to their age group. They just played the, the whole session and when there was something to correct tactically, uh, you stopped the game, uh, as simple as that. And you didn't do um, a tactical exercise because you, you know there were all, always moments where you can stop and ask or, or show them what's, what the best tactical decision would be. And you added special rules uh, as well. Can you please tell the, the viewers what, what they were and what uh, what was the purpose? No, I, I think when we work with, uh, with children, uh, the first thing, children and also big ones, but more with children, um, I think they have to, to enjoy and to have pleasure and to love the game, to love to play with the ball on the feet. And, and if you go there with a strategy of... Um, telling too much information up front and explaining too much things up front, then you are already killing the, a bit the, the training. Um, so I think that's the, the responsibility of the coach to organize exercises. So training units with good exercises where you have on your head what you want to work, but the exercise have to be fun, have to be adapted to their, to their ages. They have, they have, have to promote competition um, they have to have their goals to win, to compete, but then the exercise have to drive them to what you want. So if you want to work a situation of transitions, you have to work exercise to transitions, but where they play, because if you just talk all the time, yeah, that's, I don't like that. Uh, my trainings are always is, with children. Yeah, it's always like this. Uh, not much talk, much time of activity. And then on the activity, um, like you said, uh, if I see that something wrong or, or could be better, I just stop and I talk 30 seconds and it's enough. And then everyone understood because they saw, the, the, they experienced the situation. So it's not just a talk where you say what you want and then they go to practice. No, they did it. They feel it. They saw it. They experienced. And so was good or not good. Uh, and that's, and then, then they can learn immediately. Uh, that's for me the best way to work. And about these this, this special rules, they are not more or less than, than, than variants that I control um, in order to achieve the goals that I want for this exercise. So I start always with simple things, with the most simple things. And then I, I put some, some, some special rules, like I call them, to control the exercise in order to achieve the goal that I want. Um, and, and, and I always go, I, I put uh, the complexity in, in, in to go a bit, a bit uh, uh, more complex, more complex, more complex. Um, 
And that's a big mistake that many people do, but that's also because of my, uh, I'm teacher, yeah, and my pedagogical skills that, that you, you, you can't start with full complexity because if not, they will get lost. Uh, but yeah, some, some, some of the things that you saw with under 14, they were already worked before in some training units. I don't start immediately like this. Uh, so that's a progression. And then the exercise itself has a period of, of, of being a good exercise. Then this exercise will, will at, at one point, will not have more impact in this group. Then I drop it. Then I have to find other one, other strategy to achieve this goal. Maybe for the same, for maybe it's for the same content, but other way to achieve it, other exercise to have more motivation from the kids, to have to have them fully committed with the exercise. Yeah, but that's the, that, that's that's the part of being coach. Yeah, and I don't I don't know if you if you if you can tell us the 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 rules you the special rules you used uh, with the u uh, 12 uh, or if it's if it, or if, if you don't have the right to to no, tell it. I, I, the, it's just it, it's just using all what we can so i i you you just saw two trainings or three trainings but uh, on these trainings i use uh, Uh, let me think when you was there it was with num with name yeah. uh, with the uh, u12 the, it was with the the libli the, the cold or first yeah with the libli's but you can use all what you want sometimes i use balls on hand to to invert the game to change the direction of the game sometimes i use colors um sometimes i use the markers um sometimes i use the space is the line so if you cross the line you can invert the game to the other side It's just a matter of 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 um, use all what you can to achieve the goal, but you have to work this in your head. That's yeah. uh, that's the thing that you have to work in in time. And of course, as much more as you look uh, for that, then you work your brain to 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 build this kind of exercise. Then you will be you will find even more and even more and even more. And then one idea brings you to other idea. Um, yeah. So this, for example, this this thing of the names was a player from my team that told to me, I used to do this exercise before in other team. And then I started to talk on that. And then I said, okay, so this have potential. If I do the exercise like he told to me, it's good, but maybe it's not good enough. Then I put other variants on top of that. Then I put other variants and then I will go build with this idea. And it comes like that. Uh, so for me to tell to you now, The, the 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 rules that I use, I think it's much better that people, when they come to see that they see how I use them. Yeah, that have more impact, I guess. Yeah, maybe just to so that people can can have a, an example, the the one with the ball. Uh, so the U12 uh, teams uh, was playing a, a small sided game with uh, with a goalkeeper at each side, but both team had a ball in the hand, and uh, You 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 were able to dribble past, and the, the the player with the ball in the end just couldn't defend. He couldn't uh, take the ball from uh, the opponent. The the ball, uh, and so it makes you think. I need to pass the ball to the guy who is the first the furthest away from uh, the the ball, and uh, so I need to pass the ball with my hand to the guy who is the the furthest away from the ball. Uh, Uh, from um, the opponent that has the ball at his feet, so that that makes you think yeah. you... that that thing that 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 was just one condition that obliges when you are defending to be focused on the game, to work communication between them, uh, or verbal communication and non-verbal communication, because you have to be organized on the space to know which defender have to be, to, to have the ball in hand because he can't defend on that moment. Uh, but also for the attack, then I, I think I didn't do it, but I also do to, for the attack, for example, with this simple rule, um, if you play four against four with one guy with the ball on the hand, then I can do an exercise. It's when the ball on the feet is passed to the hand of other teammate, the ball starts this end on the floor. And then you have already a bit notion of the space. So if the time this, this teammate is close, I can pass to him. And then the game starts on the other side because my teammate with the ball on the end is on the other side. And then you will just mixing variants to, to achieve what you pretend. If you want to more focus on defense or if you want to more focus on the attack or yeah. Uh, but I think that's the beauty, the beauty of coaching. And then to promote 
exercises. That's the magic of being coach. You have to build exercises that they don't get bored and where they have fun and they achieve the goal that you pretend. Um, at, at the end, you will have better results when you do it like that because the kids will like more, they will enjoy more and they will be more focused. Uh, I think, yeah, you saw the, of course it's eBay players. So it's, they have quality, first of all, but I think the level of commitment of them, it's really, really, really high because they are always focused because the, the, the exercise demand from them this, this focus. Um, yeah, and they and they are focused and they don't think much. They need to be uh, because the exercise it's built on this on this way. Yeah, and when I saw uh, these special rules, uh, I did directly thought about uh, differential learning. I told you the, the training method of modern German coaches who are trying to train their player's brain, uh, as you said, by always adding a constraint to the game. And I made a video about that. Uh, it will appear. Uh, on the screen, uh, but I wanted to know if you, you told you just told before um, uh, a player you had uh, gave you an idea with with the the rule of the name, uh, but um, did you learn all that uh, in your futsal uh, coaching courses or well you you said as well that you that you you used to be a teacher so so you you learn a, a lot you learn this progression of adding uh, a stress of having evolution uh, uh, every week but is it something you you learn as well on, at your futsal coaching courses in portugal or is it rather the fruit of your own research or your own experience as well i think it's a, a mix of everything uh, of course, the fact of being coach gave me some pedagogical notions of how to to how to um, to get to have more impact in children's behavior and and then also learning process, etc. Um, that that's a big advantage for sure. Um, then for sure, I also learn in, in the courses that I did. Uh, essentially, the UEFA course was a a really good course I did with some of the best coaches in Portugal. Yeah, they're now almost all coaches in first league. And of course, also the experience as a coach that I had in different clubs. And uh, I had the luck uh, to be in big clubs. Okay, I started in, in a smaller club, in a smaller club, but a good club with, with good coaches also in, in the other teams. And then, of course, being in, in big clubs like Sporting and Mefic and having the opportunity to, to see and to experience the work of, of, of some of the best coaches in the world. And, of course, that also opened my horizons to, to, to understand the game and to learn the game and then looking for formations also because I try to do always some formations. Uh, now more online because here futsal formations don't, they don't exist. I have to, to, to look for them online. But uh, I always say that the, the bigger impact that I had in my life as a coach uh, was when I passed by the second time uh, in sporting and when I had the, the opportunity to work with Nuno Dias. Nuno Dias is the actual coach of sporting. He's the, at the moment the best coach in the world. Uh, he won the last year award of the best coach in the world. And uh, the way that he think the game and the way that, he, that uh, with him I discovered the power of the, the training unit, the exercise itself. How, and then with him, I discovered uh, how to really work during the week to, 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 to put in practice on the weekend. With him, I saw, okay, the guys play like this because they worked really like this. And I, I, I makes all, all, all the sense. Uh, and then with, with him, I, I, I open a lot my horizons and I'm always grateful to him because it's also for, because of him that I'm here in Switzerland at this moment. Um, but yeah, it's a bit, a bit of mix of everything, uh, of your inner desire to grow and to develop essentially that. And you told you, you learned to prepare your training plan uh, of the whole week. Is it uh, tactical periodization uh, of uh, Vitor Frade? We know uh, football coach, uh, Portuguese football coaches. Uh, um, well, they 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 all tell. Well, I learned a lot from Vitor Fred and uh, how to 
uh, prepare my training sessions um, how to how to plan it with tactical periodization the the, the mission of fit of fraud yeah uh, when I work with, with, with kids, when I was a uh, trainer, coach of, of youth, um, I always do uh, meso plans. So I don't work based on a micro plan, a weekly, a weekly plan. I work, I always work uh, in a meso period. So one, two months where I define the contents, the technical contents, the technical contents, um, which I want to work independent of the opponents because they are they are learning the game so uh, for me if i will play against this opponent it's not so important to adapt my attack to this defense what i want is that they learn uh, the game it's they have so much things to learn so i work in, uh, in meso plans uh, and i define the contents up front so to this this period of time we will work for example, we'll put the, the focus on, on defensive approach of inferiority three against two and two against one, for example. And I work two months this situation. And then after I do a reflection and analyze, I say, okay, that's fine. That's already done. So we pass to other situation, to other, other content. Uh, but this is with youth players. With seniors, with seniors, uh, not. With seniors, I I, uh, I don't have this uh, periodization, tactical periodization in so long term. I work week by week um, and I put much of, uh, I, I try to adapt uh, the weekly plan based on our opponent, uh, essentially on the second round of the championship. So first round of the championship, I put more the focus on us, essentially on what I think is not so good, and then on the second round of the championship, I put, of course, the focus on us, but trying to adapt to what I expect the others will do on the game. And sometimes I have this problem that I still have senior players that I say, yeah, this for this player would be better that I would uh, a periodization like I did for, for children, uh, for youth stages, because I know that he will grow more. But yeah, I'm working with seniors. So at the end of the day, that's my my life depend on this. Um, the results are, yeah, when you are coach, semi-professional, professional coach, you depend on the results. And uh, yeah, and we have to achieve the results. And I'm here and we never bring me here for sure, not to, to just to develop players, but also to win titles. And um, yeah, we are a bit... Uh, um how i say um and we have to go on this, yeah we have to go in this direction yeah that's that's clear but when i work with children um yeah and i had the opportunity to work with sporting and win so much titles at sporting youth titles um be because they have much more quality than the others also but i do the periodization in a in a, in a different way yeah okay well, thank you very much for your time and answer, uh, answers, Pedro. I, I hope to see you soon and I wish you uh, all the best uh, for the rest of the season. Thank you so much, Maxim, and hope to see you soon also. And good luck to you and to your progression also as coach. Thank, thank you so you. much. Thank Bye. you. Bye. Ciao.